For this update I'll be showing info and results for basic carb and CVT tuning, removing restrictions in the air box, and a key in carburetor swap. The first thing I did was carburetor tuning. I started by finding the main jet that gave me the best performance using a trial and error tuning method. With the stock 79 main jet installed I ran wide open to and from a point about 2 miles away. You don't really need to go that far but I found it let cylinder head temperatures level out better than shorter distances. I note speed and RPM each way as well as cylinder head temperature and air fuel ratio. I know most don't have a CHT and wideband on their scooter but the same method works well even with only speed and RPM. If you don't have a TAC you should consider a Trailtech TTO. They cost around $30 and are easy to install and make all kinds of tuning easier. When I finish a run I write down all of the info and any observations about feel or sound that I think could be of use. Then I swap a different jet and repeat the process. I usually go richer until performance is obviously worse and then go leaner till I see speed or RPM change. Once I've finished all those passes the data recorded usually shows one or two jets that are working best. If two jets give nearly identical results use the larger of the two because it's safer to tune towards rich. More fuel should cool the engine a little better. You can see that the 75 main jet had the best speed, highest RPM, and the air fuel ratio was about where I would have expected for good power. The stock 79 main jet wasn't a bad choice, but it surprised me a little to need a smaller jet after so many saying how lean the sealed carbs are stock and the look of my plug. Here's what the spark plug looks like after roughly 150 miles. Hardly any coloring on the porcelain, but the base ring does have black deposits. The wideband was reading 10 and 11 to 1 most of the time to make the plug look this way. Until I saw that performance came at air fuel ratios I expected, I was doubting the wideband's accuracy. After installing the 75 main jet, I set the idle mixture screw again and went for a short ride at part throttle. Air fuel ratios were very rich, 10s and 11s at part throttle, and I was still getting a rich sputter at times when getting back into the throttle. Unfortunately, the stock needle is not adjustable. I could raise it with small washers to richen the mixture at part throttle, but I didn't have a way to lower it and lean it out short of buying an adjustable needle. I ordered a needle from Parts for Scooters but it's thinner than the stock needle up top and can move around a lot in the slide. The needle from a Kian PD-19J looks like a good replacement if you can find one. You may find it helpful to mark your throttle in quarters when tuning. Usually up to about quarter throttle requires an idle mixture adjustment or pilot jet swap. Quarter to three quarter throttle problems are commonly solved by changing needle position. And three quarter to wide open throttle issues are normally main jet related. There are other parts that affect all the ranges, but tuning the jets, mixture screw, and needle covers most problems. Once the carb was tuned, I moved on to the CVT. I'm a fan of sliding weights because of their performance and long life, so I use sliders instead of rollers. Much like the main jet, I made passes with different weights and noted the speed and RPM in both directions. Again, there's a higher speed and speeds tapering off as weight rises or falls from that point. 4.75 gram looks like the clear winner, but there's more to think about. The 4.5 gram weights provided slightly better acceleration, but RPM seemed to pass peak and so they were a little slower up top. A lighter weight like that may be good for areas with lots of hills or if you ride primarily at lower speeds. The 5 gram sliders were pretty close on acceleration and kept RPM lower, which could be good if looking for more speed. In my case, there isn't enough power to go faster regularly, so I stuck with the 4.75 gram sliders. I found the clutch springs that gave me the best launch to finish up the carb and CVT tuning. Stiffer springs raise the clutch engagement RPM and help to bypass low RPM where there's not much power. You want the clutch to engage in or near your engine's power band, but before the rest of the CVT begins shifting so you can take advantage of the best low gear that your CVT can provide. 1500 RPM clutch springs work best for me, engaging the clutch just before the variator and torque driver started moving. Carburetor and CVT tuning had a big effect on performance. Here's the info from a test ride and 0 to 30 mile per hour acceleration runs.
five miles per gallon, much quicker acceleration, and a little better cruise speeds. Not bad for basic tuning. Next, I wanted to see if removing restrictions from the airbox would give any benefit. Removing the airbox restrictions is pretty easy. There are some screws around the airbox that need to be removed, and then you can take the lid off. You should find a restriction as shown that will pull up and out. There's also a hose and a plug that can be removed if you'd like. The plug should come out of the end pretty easily, or if you want to remove the whole hose, it's just one clamp. I ended up removing the whole thing. Pop the cover back on and reinstall the screws. The engine ran very lean, removing the restriction with no other changes. I couldn't move more than a few feet at wide open throttle before it bogged down and surged. I did some tuning passes and ended up using a 90 main jet. That's 20% larger than the 75 main I was using with the restrictions in place. I also readjusted the mixture screw. Even with the more free flowing air box, I still had a rich sputter at times when getting on the gas. Here are the results from a test ride in 0 to 30 runs. difference. A fraction of a second quicker to 30, not enough for me to say there's any power gain. Just over 3 mile per gallon loss, which is only about 3% difference and likely due to other variables. Probably not worth the effort if you plan on sticking with an otherwise stock 49cc and it would respond more to changes in weather and other conditions than the more restrictive setup would. I did choose to leave the restrictions out of my airbox, so keep that in mind when I mention jetting from this point on. I've had a key in PD-19J sitting here since I bought the Tau Tau. It's a better quality carb that allows access to adjustments without having to remove plugs and broken screws and it has an adjustable needle. The stock carb is also labeled as a PD-19J so hopefully this should give a good comparison of stock versus Kian. The Kian installs easily just the same way the stock carb does. After installation I went through the tuning process again. It had an 85 main jet from the factory and I used a 90 just like the stock carb. I set the needle to the leanest position and finally saw part throttle air fuel ratios in the 11 to 13 to 1 range and better throttle response. Once again I took a long test ride and here are the results from that. second quicker to 30, which I attribute to improvement in throttle response on starts. I can feel the difference at every stop sign and each time I get back on the gas. I think the increase in fuel economy happens for the same reason. It was just too rich without the adjustable needle. The Kian is a worthwhile swap and a good carburetor, but I think you could probably see very similar results with a stock carb using a different needle. 
I'll be keeping the key in on Project Taltal and I've got one more goal for it to finish up this update. Being a big guy and more of a two-stroke enthusiast, I've never seen 100 miles per gallon on any of my scooters. Getting as close as 98 miles per gallon just wasn't good enough, so I went on another ride the next night. This time I rode for fuel economy, trying to make smooth transitions and riding at 25 to 30 miles per hour where I could use less throttle. I think I was only wide open two or three times trying not to get ran over by cars where there were no shoulders. After 43.9 miles, I filled up with .399 gallons of gas. That's 110 miles per gallon. Nothing too crazy for most, but that's a long shot from my 40 to 50 mile per gallon two-stroke scooters. If you enjoy these videos, please like, favorite, and subscribe for more, and thank you for watching.